If not us, who? And if not now, when? The following is an EHC media production. Black power got my fist in the air. Screaming black power. I feel like Tookie Williams' this last hour. We used to stand for something, but most niggas is cowards. Took Rose the Bucks to sit down. So I'm pro black like the pigs with the fist now. 80s crack exists now. All these babies going crazy because these ladies smoking daily now. So tell me, how you really gonna say the chow? When it's still running through our veins as a juvenile. If something's gonna change, you better do it now. Since this makes sense, we gon' start a movement now. It'll take Hello folks, I know it's been a hot minute, but I am back. My name is Mike Larkin and I am the host of The Future Is Now, where I take a look back and analyze, dissect and decipher The Future Is Now, that being 205 Live and NXT. So sit back, relax, and enjoy, because the podcast starts now, and we're going to start it off with 205 Live. So I'm going to say this before I even play the music and do the intro. It has been a hellacious few weeks for yours truly. New job. And also, my days are limited because I am just on the grind and my only days are Sunday and Monday that I have off. So, I am kind of exhausted, but I am hanging in there, always on the grind and just staying happy and looking at the positive side of things and just, you know, on my path, on my grind, which I hope each and every lady, every gentleman listening to this show does. Stay in your path because good things will come out of it. There's a little inspiration at the start of this show. So I just want to say, yes, I'm back after a hellacious WrestleMania weekend, new job and all, and just ooh, a lot of hours of wrestling on the WWE Network and overall wrestling in general from a pay-per-view aspect. So without further ado, let's take a look back at 205 Live from this past week and NXT. We're going to start off with some 205 Live, y'all. God dang, I've missed that theme and I love that song. So anyway, I digress. 205 Live opens with Drew Gulak. He welcomes us all to 205 Live. 
He says, up is down and down is up. He understands if you are confused. Tony Nese defied the odds to become the Cruiserweight Champion at WrestleMania. Cedric Alexander and Buddy Murphy leave 205 Live. Cedric goes to Raw. Buddy Murphy goes to SmackDown. Only Lorcan faces Ara Devar to determine Tony Nese's opponent. Drew says the Cruiserweight title will eventually be around his waist, but he has unfinished business against his ungrateful student, Umberto Carrillo. Umberto will learn the lesson that when you step to Drew Gulak, you will tap out. And Nigel McGuinness was not there this week as he was at assignment at the UK Performance Center. So your commentators this week were Vic Joseph, Aiden English, and David Otunga. Yay. Uh, Jack Gallagher says he had to get some stitches so he could not be there tonight. Jack says, what has Drew Gulak done for him? Drew used Jack to further his goals. His suspicions were confirmed in his match against Humberto Carrillo. You will respect him as an adversary. So I got to tell you right now, as far as the Drew Gulak, Storyline goes, I am very much looking forward to a Drew Gulak, Jack Gallagher feud because you're going to be in for a treat with those matchups because, you know, two guys that are very, well, mat-based wrestlers and great opponents from a technician standpoint and from an overall submission standpoint and just overall in general, I think you're going to get a lot of magic with that, with those matchups. So speaking of matchups, here's our first matchup. It was Drew Gulak versus Umberto Carrillo. It was the typical, I like Umberto, you know, waving at him as he's going to the top rope and the tippy top, telling Drew to come on up. You know, it's the old safe and sound, feet on the ground, Drew Gulak, he's working over him, you know, with you know, with, with the submissions, like the surfboards, the leg locks, working on the arms, Umberto's doing the luchador moves, you know, the dives to the outside, the, um, like almost like the Eddie Guerrero, the springboard arm drag, and just, it's really... It was a great mesh of styles, and I think they gelled very well for Umberto Carrillo, who's so young, and we've seen him on NXT, a team with Raul Mendoza, who was in the inaugural uh, Cruiserweight Classic. I think they form a formidable tag team there. I think he's done well for himself on 205 Live, so I gotta say, I really did enjoy watching these two gel and mesh, and I like that Umberto got the clean victory. So speaking of Umberto getting that overall clean victory, uh, the finishing sequence came when Carrillo was punching Drew, and then an elbow and a headbutt from Drew. Uh, Drew puts Carrillo on the turnbuckles, and Drew with a chop. Drew sets up for a superplex, but, a superplex excuse me, but Carrillo blocks it. Carrillo slaps Drew, and Drew goes to the mat, hits him with a sunset flip powerbomb. Then Carrillo with the Aztec press, the uh, stalling uh, springboard moonsault from Umberto Carrillo. The Aztec press for the 1-2-3, and Umberto Carrillo gets the victory over Drew Gulak, and it was a very hot opener. So I like that they gave these guys time, and they meshed very well. We go to Oni Lorcan in the back. He says that he has been training and making sacrifices for more than 10 years. He wanted to go to the WWE and become a champion. One man stands between him and a title match, Arya Davari. He is not about flash. He just wants to fight. Arya Davari says uh, once he got his priorities straight, he has been untouchable. He's undefeated in 2019. He does not care if it's Oni Lorcan, Tony Nese, or the entire 205 Live roster. Nobody will stop him from becoming the next Cruiserweight Champion. Uh, then we come back with Drake Maverick, who's telling Maria Kanellis that she's getting involved in her husband's matches. Brian Kendrick shows up, and Drake tells him to stay back. Maria says that Tozawa is a coward. Brian says Tozawa can do his own fights. Brian says he's leaving because he's only a distraction. Then here comes Akira Tozawa. He attacks uh, Mike Kanellis, and then he's held back, and that allows Mike to punch Tozawa. And we saw Sanjay Dutt holding uh, Tozawa back. I gotta say... I'm looking forward to a street fight match between these two, which I think is on the horizon. So I think Tozawa and Mike Kanellis are going to do very well. And I personally, I like Mike Kanellis. I love the power love theme. I know for those who listen to Max Wrestling, Butcher and I love that song and love Mike and Maria. So I think the two of them and Tozawa will be very, very good. And personally, I'm digging it. So that's another feud I'm into. Uh, before the main event starts, we do see that Tony Nese is making his way out to join... Uh, and sit ringside for the matchup for the main event between Ara Davari and Oni Lorcan. This was one of those where it was Ara Davari just working over Oni, Oni with the submissions and the uppercuts, and these two just brawled. It was great, the suplexes. Uh, pretty much it was just Oni going for the, you know, the half and half suplex there, the half dragon suplex, the reverse suplex, if you will, which is sweet. But, you know, Arya countered him, hit him with super kicks, hit him with a reverse DDT. It was back and forth action. Again, they gave these guys time. And I think it's great because we have a new addition uh, with the 205 Live roster with Oni Lorcan. And, you know, Oni's doing his thing with Danny Burch on NXT, which I'll get to here in a moment. But I think he adds a lot to 205 Live because he's another great grappler and a great striker. Uh, we saw him hit the blockbuster in that matchup. I liked it as well. 
Um, but I think they both gelled well. And I think Ari Davari, I think it's time because we need a heel for Tony Nese. So I think Ari Davari is that great heel. And who knows, we may see Ari Davari as the Cruiserweight Champion. And I've always also liked Ari Davari because, yes, he was also in the inaugural Cruiserweight Classic. But his brother was very good too, Sean Davari, who was with Muhammad Hassan, uh, managed uh, the Mark Henry, the great Kali. Uh, he was very good. So I dug the matchup. The finishing sequence came where Davari goes up top, hits the frog splash after a super kick. And uh, then he hits the Hammerlock Lariat for the 1-2-3, and he pins Oni Lorcan. And Arya Davari is your number one contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, Tony Nese offers his hand after the match, and he congratulates Davari. Davari tells Nese he wants the title, and Nese tells Davari to try to take it from him. Uh, Davari walks away, and there's your future uh, Cruiserweight Championship matchup that we are going to see with Arya Davari and Tony Nese. And quite frankly, I'm looking forward to it. I think you're going to get something special out of that, so... Uh, that was your 205 Live this week. Only two matches, but two long matches, and a progression in the feud with Tozawa and Kanellis. And personally, I thought it was fine the way that they executed 205 Live this week, and um, it's going to make for an interesting week uh, come next week. So now that I'm done speaking about 205 Live, it is now time to talk about the week that was NXT. <laughs> Let's get into NXT this week. NXT started off hot with right in-ring action. We had Jackson Riker of the Forgotten Sons taking on Umberto Carrillo. Uh, this was just Umberto coming in there, hitting his springboard round kick. Uh, Riker was just handspring back elbows, moonsault by Carrillo. This was just him beating the living crap out of Carrillo, slamming him, uh, pretty much dropping him with a slam, tossing him to the floor, the apron. Uh, friggin' Riker throws him into the guardrail, then he's friggin' you know, knees to the head, referee calls for the belt. This was just Umberto getting some, you know, hope spots in, and then Riker just demolished him. It was a no contest. Um, after the match, Riker drops Carrillo onto the guardrails, and Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch come out to make the save for Carrillo. Cutler and Blake do their best to keep Riker from going after Birch, Lorcan, or Carrillo, and I think this is going to lead to probably a six-man tag team matchup with Oni, Birch, and Carrillo against um, the Forgotten Sons, and that feud is not over between Birch and Lorcan and the Forgotten Sons, so more progression there. It did what it needed to do. Um, uh, after that, we saw Adam Cole Bebe is in the back for a photo shoot. He is asked about the match between Roderick Strong and Johnny Gargano. Adam says that he thought Johnny would be man enough to face the leader of the Undisputed Era. Roderick will beat Johnny to a pulp. Matt Riddle, bro. Uh, is watching, and he tells Adam he is next for a photo shoot. He says he never saw anyone as jealous of Adam for Roderick getting a match. Uh, Riddle asks Cole what is he going to do. Adam says he's better. he has better things to deal with as Matt has his photo shoot. Bro, surfs up, cowbunga. Bro. <laughs> uh, then we get Vanessa Bourne and Aaliyah versus Candice LeRae and her tag team partner, Casey Catanzaro. This was Casey Catanzaro doing the, um, you know, the Hurricane Ranas, and this was just Vanessa Bourne and Aaliyah, you know, catching her caught up in the ropes. The double suplex is working over uh, Casey Catanzaro, and then she counters the um, double suplex attempt again from Vanessa Bourne and Aaliyah. Hits a neck breaker. Candice comes in, get, hits a missile drop kick on Bourne, baseball slide to Aaliyah. Then she hits a slingshot jawbreaker on Vanessa Bourne. Then the running elbow and a snapmare. Um, it was very... It was very good. Then she hits the step up senton, and just it was a great offense from Candice LeRae from you know getting the beat down from the heels. That being Vanessa Bourne and Aaliyah. Then afterwards, Candice 
Hits in like a neck breaker. Then she hits the Lions off of the 1 2 3 and pins Vanessa Bourne. So a new tag team is born here in Candice LeRae and uh, Casey Gonzaro. They did very well. Uh, thwarting the attempts of the heels, Vanessa Bourne Elliott was what it was. And I think with the Iconics as the tag champs, we're probably going to see them like they were going to do with Sasha Bailey go from brand to brand, NXT UK, possibly NXT. There's a lot of formidable tag teams out there. So, very good match between the ladies. Uh, we see footage from last week. Kyrie Sane lost out on her final chance for the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, Kathy Kelly's with Io Shirai and asked her what happened last week with Kyrie, and she's all distraught. She says what Shayna did was terrible, and she will get Shayna. But before we can hear any anything else, Marina Shafir and Jessamyn Duke attack from behind, and then Shayna finishes her off, finishes her off with a kick. So Shayna takes out Io, and that's probably going to be the next matchup as we go into t- the next takeover. It'll probably be Shayna and Io, which I'm down for. We're back. William Regal's talk about Kushida signing with NXT. Regal says that he is one of the best competitors. Triple H says Kushida wanted to come in to face the best. Kushida says he wants to show what he can do. Regal says Kushida will be at the top within a year if he's asked for a prediction. And then we get William Regal in his office. He's asked about how he's excited for Kushida's debut next week. Regal says this is the one of the most exciting things to happen in NXT. Now here comes Cassius Ono, fresh off NXT UK. He shows up. And William congratulates him on the job he's doing in NXT UK. Ono says that he's humbled to be the guy to teach the young guys the authentic European style. Ono congratulates Regal on signing Kushida. Ono asks, who on the roster knows the Japanese high-flying style better than him? Ono suggests that he face Kushida next week. Regal is asked about the match, and Regal likes the idea of Kushida. And so we're going to get Kushida versus Cassius Ono in Kushida's debut next week. That's going to be hard-hitting, and I'm looking forward to it. You're going to be in for a treat with that matchup. The next matchup that we get is the Street Profits. Versus the War Raiders here, because, well, they're on NXT, and we can't use War on the main roster. You know what's funny about that, too? I just gotta say, what's funny about that is, they're the Viking Raiders now on Raw, and the Viking Experience, which was the original name, they got the Backlash, is the name of their finisher. (laughs) Go figure. Ugh. Alright, so, we get this matchup. Montez War comes out, hits a dive as uh, War Raiders are coming to the ring. This was just, you know, the springboards with the German that the War Raiders did. The springboard back elbow from Hansen. Uh, just the double teams were amazing in this. The um, like the street sweeper that they were going for, like uh, the neck breaker. Then, you know, Angel Dawkins has him up. As, excuse me, has um roll up in the uh, electric chair maneuver. And then Montez was coming with the neck breaker. Um, we saw, you know, the, the spine buster in the beginning and the frog splash because they attacked right away. I thought they did a very good job. You know, people will say what they will about the Street Profits, and yes, I can kind of see them as like a Crime Time 2.0. They got the homage to Harlem Heat with their attire, with the with the bright colors and stuff like that. So, I get it, and I think they could be annoying if you're not a fan of Montez doing the running man and just, you know, stirring up, stirring up the cup there, stirring it up, as Angelo Dawkins does. I thought it was good, man. They just flew him around, you know, Street Profits are flying. It was it was a highly octane, you know, aerial salt mixed with power type, type of matchup. And then the finish comes where Hanson hits a clothesline to Dawkins. The road tags in. They hit the Thor's hammer, which is now the Viking experience. The uh, toss up into the power slam for the 1-2-3. And the War Raiders win the non-title matchup. And then next up, we get the Undisputed Era. They're discussing strategy for tonight. Johnny Gargano's getting ready. Then we get an interview with Mia Yim. She's asked about Shayna Baszler. Mia says Shayna's unstoppable. Look what she did to Kyrie Sane and what she is doing to Io Shirai. Bianca Belair had two chances and she does not look undefeated. Mia says she learned a lot about herself and Shayna when she faced Shayna. Uh, Mia wants another chance at Shayna and will prove why she is a threat. So I'm down for that. Mia and Shayna, give me some more. I feel like Buster Rhymes. Give me some more. So next up, we get the main event. And the main event is Johnny Gargano versus Roderick Strong. This was just high-octane. Roderick Strong working over the back. These two know each other very well. Nice counters. Uh, The insiguries, forearms, jumping knees, back elbows, discus clotheslines, gut busters, cord busters, the whole nine. It was just very, very good. Uh, The finishing sequence comes when Roderick Strong goes for the stronghold, the Boston Crab. Uh, Gargano blocks it. Gargano kicks Strong. Gargano tries for the Gargano escape. And he locks it in, and Adam Cole, baby, makes his way out to the apron, and Gargano releases the hold. Gargano with an elbow, while Cole berates Gargano, tells him he's a loser. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish come out, but Matt Riddle stops them to even the odds. Cole with an insiguri, but he accidentally hits Roderick Strong. He was aiming, thinking it was Gargano, but it was not. And Gargano hits the suicide dive onto Cole, then he hits the slingshot DDT on a Roderick Strong for the 1-2-3, and Johnny Gargano is your winner. 
And then we see after the match, Cole tries to explain to Strong what happened. He didn't mean to hit him. Strong does not want to listen to Cole, and then they leave the ring, and there's dissension among the rankings in the Undisputed Era, and that's how we end NXT. Now, I'm going to tell you guys straight up and down, two good shows this week. I would watch both matches with Umberto and Drew Gulak and the matchup between Ari Devar and Oni Lorcan, so watch all of 205 Live. NXT, go out of your way to watch Street Profits and War Raiders. Uh, Candice and Casey against Vanessa Bourne and Leah was good. Um... The first matchup with Jackson Riker and um, Umberto, that was just to set up more with the progression with the Forgotten Sons and Birch and Lorcan. Um, if anything, out of NXT, I would really watch Street Profits and War Raiders, and I would watch the main event that was Johnny Gargano and Roderick Strong. Watch the whole show because it was good, but those are the two to really look out for this week, the Gargano-Strong match and the Street Profits-War Raiders, and watch both matches on 205 Live. So that's my thoughts on the shows this week. Uh, it was very good. You know, interesting, and I'm looking forward because next week they did announce on 205 Live uh, that we're going to see... Well, actually, did they announce anything on 205? No. Okay, well, I'm going to guess we're going to get Tozawa and uh, Mike Kanellis. They did, however, announce next week on NXT that we are going to get Kushida's debut against Cassius Ono, which we're in for a treat with that. So I'll hopefully be back next week. I know I've been doing these on and off again, but I hope to be back you know, on a regular basis. If not, I'll talk to y'all next time, but I hope you enjoyed this quick review. And enjoy NXT and 205 Live next week. You can follow me on Twitter at SMShow1 or at MCL92. My SoundCloud is MCLarkin92, and the website is www.stevenmikeshow.com. You can check me out on Max Wrestling at Max Wrestling UK on Twitter, RWT Podcast on Twitter and YouTube and the Facebook group RWT and the Facebook group Max Wrestling Podcast Interactive. Max Wrestling Interactive. So just you'll, you guys will just, you'll find it, pretty much, just go, if you go into RWT, uh, we're there, uh, the Max Wrestling team is, I know Evolution of Pro Wrestling is trying to interfere, and, you know, just take over RWT, there's a lot going on, we have the, um, what's interesting that we have coming up is we have Trivia Takeover coming up, well, I will, where I will be defending the Knowledge Championship against the Phoenix, our last, our last encounter, uh, the, the stipulations are, if I win, then Phoenix can't get a shot at the Knowledge Championship ever again. But if he beats me, then I can't get a shot for a full whole year because how apropos, I was the champion for my first reign almost a year, but I didn't quite make it. So I want to see how Phoenix takes, you know, if he becomes champion, trying to hold on to it for over a year, like I'm doing right now in my second reign. So, yeah, an interesting trivia takeover, the finals of the King of the Mike slash Queen of the Mike tournament. And... See, it pains me because my first opponent is going to be against my homegirl, my tag team partner in the Larkin Summers connection. That is the Switch Babe herself, Courtney Summers, which, guys, check out her show, Talking Strong Style. It's going to be an amazing first episode coming this week. Um, just, yeah, check out everybody on RWT Max Wrestling. That's really all I got to say. Uh, guys, thank you so much for just tuning in to my shows, Max Wrestling, RWT. The future is now. We have a lot of great talents coming up and rising through the ranks. And I just wish everybody a great week. And just uh, God bless. I'll talk to you all next time. Promo championship on the line uh, coming very soon as well. We're going to see that defended by the Butcher. Uh, the finals of the King of the Mike, Queen of the Mike tournament. Trivia take over. Myself and Phoenix. Knowledge title on the line. A lot of fun stuff coming. So stay tuned. Be on the lookout. Have a great night. And thank you all for listening. The future is now. My name is Mike Larkin.